who's just brought out a revision of John Kelly's work on the Constitution in the High Court in it dealing with an issue completely nothing to do with this. I noticed that he was involved with that case in 2008 in regard to the hospital. He was the barrister, the senior counsel on behalf of the... So he has his mind around these subjects. But suddenly he appeared with a judgment that stated that the work of Dialogue Island, not journalism, not uh, reporting stuff, that per se is irrelevant. What you're doing is, if once you're educating the public, what I'm saying here may not be nice for some people, they may not like it, but once I'm educating the public, and I'm not defaming anybody, I'm telling the truth about what I'm saying, we are protected by Article 42, 3 or whatever it is. It's all there, you can read it. It's an amazing judgment. We couldn't believe what we read. But the interesting thing was, we couldn't believe what we didn't read, or we didn't see in the newspapers or in the media from, this, from that day to this. There's been no reportage of that. Now, not because I want to be in the news. I don't need that. I have enough problems without being in the news myself. Uh, but it's interesting that that particular judgment, which you would have thought would have been an instant piece for prime time or for somebody, Pat Kenny just floated away. No one wants to know. We're now having to go to the Supreme Court, which is usually means, in this case, delay so that the people who should have been paid for doing their work won't be paid so Mr. Quinn can get a little bit more uh, extraction from this case. So educating the public is our main thing to do. So we've looked at some of the groups. There's the House of Prayer, there's Tony Quinn, there's Scientology, then there's the Legionaries of Christ, the Catholic group. In other words, up until about when I did my thesis on the Magnificat Neil movement, and I'm sure you've all heard of WikiLeaks. If you go up and you look up Magnificat Neil movement on our blog, I published our first uh, MMM leaks last week, showing that there used to be a company in, in um, Mary Street, on Talbot Street, and on Cable Street called Falcons. They used to be a decorating company. They became under the influence of this, Irish, of this Australian woman who claimed to have visions of Our Lady. She had all right, but they were mainly hallucinations. And they themselves have paid 1.3 million to this organization. We have another woman who has become part of this group, and she was the second in command. She happened to be a very well-trained Irish uh, accountant. She was able to extract money of millionaires in, in, in America. We have all the figures there. We're going to be releasing them until we get someone coming up who says, stop, we wanted to negotiate. Because at the moment, this, this group is like a little colony. No one can touch them. They're just living in the middle of Australia and they're completely cut off. So there's no way of penetrating. When you get into a Catholic group, Cardinal Schoenberg of Vienna said, there cannot be a sect within the Catholic Church. He's changed his mind on that by, it took him about four years. But what, what the point is, you could say there cannot be a problem if a doctor is registered with the medical council. Of course there can be a problem. Just because you're registered doesn't mean that you're not a cultist. Yes, you can be an approved order of the Catholic Church. I mean, the House of Prayers, definitely not. But look at the way canon law works. The Cardinal, who we have all heard about in relation to his failures in regard to the young children in Northern Ireland who were this Brendan Smith event that started, it's hard to believe now, that's 1994. And he still doesn't see a need to walk. He doesn't see that he needs to function according to his own rules. Canon law states that if somebody, like he has a priest in his diocese, who's going over to this unrecognized group in Ackle, which is not recognized by the Diocese of Chu, and a bishop is the, le the leader in his own diocese, this priest is coming across from the Armada diocese every Saturday, even though this place is a heretical uh, center where the woman has been quite publicly revealed to be taking money off people. We have pictures of checks on our website, you can see them there. And she is in fact allowed to go scot-free. And this priest is not disciplined. The reason likely is because this priest 
was a very courageous person who in the 1980s stood up against this, the vice president of Maynooth called Mihol McGrail, um, uh, Mihol, not McGrail, that's a sociologist, Mihol Ledworth, who was in fact, um, Mihol Ledworth later joined Ramtha, which is a new age group out in Washington state. So this priest spoke out against it and the Catholic hierarchy turned on him. They sent him to Rome first, then they stuck him up in a school in Armagh, then they stuck him in a small little parish. So he was a small fish in a big pond. But through Christina, who sucked him in, he became a big fish, a small pond. And so he's been operating in that manner. And so the other group that I wanted to mention, because we last March we were all here together, and Paul Paul, you remember, he had the problem with his audiovisual, and I said, I'm not going to make that mistake tonight, I've got my piece of paper. <laughs> I, I'm not going to have my kind of TV moment that way. So, basically, um, we got a very good description of this legion disease, legionnaire's disease, uh, called the Legion of Christ, which had its original offices and that. And there's a famous fellow here, most of you would be too young to remember, Mike Murphy, who was um, on RTE. His brother was one of the leading members of that particular group. And then they have another group, Regnum Christi, which is the women's department. Uh, this group owns something in the range of 20 billion US dollars. The Catholic Church is in the moment. Can you imagine if you had an organization which founder was a pedophile who had two uh, women and he had children with who he both assaulted, he was so close that, the car, uh, that John Paul II allowed him to, to park his car in the Vatican. He was regarded as the greatest thing since the slice of pan in regard to the mission of the, of the new evangelization according to the Catholic Church. We also have another group which is currently very prominent in this Irish Republic under the... I'll ask you the simple question. What do you make of Archbishop Dermot Martin? What do you make of him? Do you think he's a progressive? He stood out against the sex abuse stuff. He seemed to be, he has formed no structures, but he's a part of a group called Community Liberazione. It's a Catholic order which is very similar in its part of these new evangelization groups. When the Catholics have these World Day of Prayers, they bust their people in. It's like, a, it's like a, the, the, these are the Catholic shock troops. Young people are bust into Canada or wherever it's happening to be from these organizations. They go to Ravenna every summer. There could be 100,000 of these uh, Catholic uh, organizations. The head of the Lombardy, the state of Lombardy, is part of this organization. There's been massive fraud and EU funds gone missing. And I recently came across a woman who's, uh, and I came across them myself in two uh, secondary schools where they were actually chaplains, where they actually weren't doing the work of the chaplaincy, which is the Catholic community in the area, but recruiting people to this organization. And if you look at next Easter, look at Archbishop Dermot Martin, where will he be? In the Phoenix Park with members of this group. John Waters, the fellow who was, as you know, declaring himself very strongly against this, uh, this particular amendment that was coming out, is a strong supporter of theirs. And when I was talking to a nun recently, she's telling me that his offices in the, in the Archbishop's house in Drumcondra have members of, like a youth brigade of this group working inside there. So it reminds me a lot of the old days of the provost and uh, you're having these little subgroups working within one's uh, group. So is he actually uh, the Archbishop of Dublin of the Irish province or is he part of the community liberation uh, shock troops to re-evangelize the Irish? It ain't kind of working, is it? And anyway, let's wait and see. I'm, I'm interested to see. I couldn't understand why I was never getting able to meet him. And that suddenly became very wise to why I'm not. Then I bring you to, to West Cork. In this country, we have a thing called the hospice movement. Have any of you, I hope that some of you have had the experience 
of death and dying, which has led you to be involved with one like St. Francis, Francis, one in Rohini, or the one which is one of the first in the world. Actually, the first one was in Cork. But there's a group down in West Cork called uh, Dutson Bearer. It's connected to Sogil Rukmashe, who is a Tibetan Lama, and he has been involved. And again, you can, you can read and make up your own opinion. Look on our blog. If you look at it, you'll see that there are allegations going back to the early 90s that he was involved with major involvement with abuse of, of women that has been uh, habitual and throughout a number of countries. I first became alerted to this in 1997 at the London School of Economics when I was at a conference uh, hosted by the uh, sociologist of religion Eileen Barker. And so what I'm saying to you is we need to be alert. We don't need to do a witch hunt. What we do need is to use due diligence, check things out. And the greatest resource today is put up the name of the group. Let's say we call it Rick Park, Dotson Bearer, and just put it up. I was just two weeks ago, uh, a couple of weeks ago, it was actually about two months ago, I became aware that a secondary school was about to send its six-year students to that location. It was a fantastic location, wonderful location, overlooking Allahees in West Cork. It's my own native county, as I'm Munster by, by the grace of God, as they say, for the red uniform. Um, but in terms of that situation, um, what we understand is that this isn't clearly wants to be brought up. The churches don't want to know about it. President McAleese, who we informed about it in 2009, she withdrew. There are other people like Sister Stanislaus Kennedy. There are people like that fellow who runs this um, uh, headstrong, Tony Bates, who are actively still involved in giving lectures down there, even though they are fully aware of the historical background and they refuse to withdraw. And in fact, the president said to, the former president said to my contact, when I contacted her office, which is now this shadow, that she was quite happy for her photographs to go up. So I'm going to put them up, connected to the story of what has been going on for the last 20 years, and could be even longer from what we hear from a lot of women who contact me, Irish women, who are still not, they're still too fearful to go public. And then uh, we, we let them grow in strength. And then when they come out, it'll be stronger than ever before. So there's a misunderstanding that we are in fact trying to infringe on people's right to believe. We have no interest in people's right to believe. We have no, it's not relevant to our discussion, but people who are in cults, they use the nomenclature of, of belief to hide behind as a means of protecting what they are doing in the way of abuse of human rights to people within their group. And so they join the OSCE or they join international forums to try to infiltrate their kind of political uh, message to dilute the work of groups like ours. We are part of an international body called FACRIS, which is a Europe-wide organization. And we also have members in Australia, South Africa, Israel, and, uh, and I think Argentina who are promoting an understanding of cultism. Cultism is the phenomenon of control and manipulation. It's not about cults, it's about cultism. Obviously, it then becomes a cult-like group, but we don't define a thing immediately within, by trying to categorize somebody as a cult, because that then freezes it. It doesn't actually open discussion. It closes it down. And so, we are saying it's not about religion, it's about influence and that people can be shown to be under influence. Let me use a couple of examples. In 1990s, when the ceasefire in the UK was breaking up, I don't know, you're not young enough possibly to remember, I was, have you ever heard of the Balcom Street Massacre in, in London? That was when Irish people, just think of being in a place like Grafton Street or some street where Talbot Street, you're in a restaurant, 
and suddenly a group of Irish fellows would come down with a machine gun and start firing into the windows. Or you were down in a pub somewhere in England and someone would suddenly start blowing it up. We think of that as the Taliban or Al-Qaeda. But that is the same mind control that we had in our society based on a republican ideology of control, which we find in the same people who were in the flight that took off from Boston in, on September the 11th. I remember very well because I was sitting in a pub uh, near the bus station and I thought it was the latest Schwarzenegger, uh, Schwarzenegger um, movie when I saw these planes going in and then the next one and then suddenly we realized everything was changed. But that young man, Atta, who's an Egyptian, middle class background, studied architecture in Hamburg. But he, I don't know if you remember, there's a fellow called Michael Collins who left this, he done a little bit of, came from West Cork and he went off to London and he joined a group in Filsbury called the uh, Fenians. Physical force crowd. Kind of crowd who took over the 1916 event and changed it into a revolutionary destruction. Now that's not to say that something wouldn't have gone pear shaped anyway, but I'm just saying it's amazing that we don't see the concept of influence, and that's one of the reasons the Irish people don't like to talk about cults, because we've been in a cult since our foundation of our state. This has been a cult state, a mindset of control, and you have to be in the party, fear of all, fear again, you know, so that, so, you know, that we're beginning to overcome this. I remember when I was a young person, I went to study in Belfast in 1970. I joined Provisional Sinn Féin for a few months, and I was trying to uh, educate Protestant uh, young people on the Republican way of thinking, and, uh, you know, and I understood you had to make an omelette, you had to break a few eggs. And I met Ian Pace and he said, would you like to join the DUP? I said, well, how can I? I'm a Republican. And so was John Calvin, the founder of the Presbyterian Faith Connection. He set up the first Republican Geneva. So hardly uh, going to go a monarchy way with you, Ian, says I. But then I, I, I came to a non-violent conclusion but I'm saying it took me, and then I, I was reading a book by Conor Cruz O'Brien who said Ireland is made up of two tribes of imaginary Jews. Just think about that. We don't become Catholics or Protestants. When I go into schools, I ask the first question, how many of you were born Catholic? And every hand goes up, including the teachers. Why? Because there are nets set out to catch you before you're born, quoting James Joyce from the portrait of a young artist. We do not become, we are born into it. And Christianity is not a religion of, of uh, actual birthright religion, it's one of rebirth and renewal. But unfortunately it has become corrupted and controlled and as a result it is no longer itself. And, it, you know, and if you go to Clonliffe College, which you can't get into anymore, but there's a big relief on the wall, a mural. The Brits were marched out at 22, and guess who came in? The Roman Empire. And that it was on the wall in the seminary, they, they pictured it. It's the Battle of Milvan Bridge, where Constantine the Emperor was successful in winning the Empire. But he, what side did he, did, he, did, he, did he go in there on? In hoc signet vincit. In this sign conquer. What was the sign? It was the cross. So Christianity, which was about God loving the human race and gave his son to die on the cross to act as a symbol of how you get into the club, becomes used as a vehicle for massive control of society. So for instance, when the Germans wanted to, they had a choice of becoming Christians. You had two choices at the time of, of Lent and Easter. 
You either got drowned in the river or you got baptized. Guess in which most people went for? It was the same message which was taken out of the Crusaders. Jesus Christ, actually, when you killed one of these fellows, you were actually saving his soul by killing him. Fortunately, in Ireland, we didn't get that particular Constantinian stuff, but we made up for it late in the day, unfortunately. I've got to close, and I want to say thank you for your attention. What are we going to do, though, is to allow plenty of time for questions, and I'm going to ask a little panel, and I'm going to include someone who I just met for the first time, but he's a great source of understanding of a particular group. There's a gentleman by the name of Mike Megan. He was the founder of a, of a charitable group which called ICROSS. And ICROSS was a group that was um, flavor of the month here. It was like gold in terms of East Africa. It got one million from a, from a, from a documentary that was put onto RTE. And then there were questions being raised by some of the trustees here that he was involved with some form of abuse of young men that he was involved with. He was living among them, and the, the, the mail on uh, the mail, the Daily Mail here, was involved with the High Court action. I myself was threatened with with uh, a, a, an attack. You know, not not just a. You know, normally you have defamation, which is the notion that you're telling untruth and you you have to take it down or, or print a, an apology. He doesn't want that. He wanted to make a claim on my charity, which has no money, but he thought, ah, we'll try the insurer, might, might be a sucker enough to, to pay up. And we have Simon Pullery here, who was one of the people who ran a, a work of a similar type, but uh, he can explain it himself, but he was one of the people at the early days on our blog, when we were under attack, who came to our defense, and that's the good news about what our blog does. I have Matthew, who is our saviour, because in 19, 2009, Tony Quinn did a massive attack on our website. We've now discovered that he spent two million of oil money trying to take Dialogue Island out. And Matthew came up with a WordPress construct. It's not the greatest thing since the sliced pan, but it's one of the best pans that you can fry an egg in. And what I'm saying to you is then we have Dennis, who is the husband of a woman whose, son, whose brother, if you want to go and see this, go on to our, our resources on our old website, The Late Late Show 1995, about his brother-in-law, who's still mentally under the control of Scientology. And he'll tell his story. And then I'd like to introduce you to Mohammed, who fortunately, we're very glad to say, has just come back from we weren't sure whether it was going to be a five-year, ten-year, or a life sentence in his own whole country of Saudi Arabia. He's one of the gentlemen that has done a lot to help us to deal with some of our own Irish versions of the Taliban who have been trying to uh, attack other branches of, of Islam in this country. And uh, Mohammed is someone who has experience of being in Bahrain last year when some of you would have heard about what happened in the Pearl Square and he was one of those beaten up and I remember speaking to him nearly live on the phone as it, all this was unfurling. So let's just take a few questions and if there's any of those areas that you'd like to talk about or you'd like to disagree or to come back with anything, please do. And then if there's any particular of those areas that I raised, feel free and they'll come and have a little chat about it. Thank you very much.